Congratulations on your new Prefort Panel Walker. This instructional video will show the installation of Prefort 6 Horse Panel Walker. It will demonstrate the fundamentals of how to properly install your walker, even if it's not this particular model. Be sure to watch this video through in its entirety and read the provided assembly instruction booklet for precise dimensions and specifications that pertain to your walker. Following these instructions will help ensure that your walker is installed correctly and will continue to function properly for many years to come. Prefort carefully packages all the necessary parts and accessories so everything arrives as ordered. The tools needed to complete this installation will include a shovel and possibly a pickaxe, a level, a tape measure, an impact drill fitted with 3 quarter inch, 15 16 and 7 16 inch sockets, an adjustable wrench, wire strippers, pliers, a ladder, a chain or heavy duty tie down strap, and a forklift or front end loader. Selecting a location for your walker is very important. Depending on its diameter, you will need to calculate the amount of space required to safeguard the walker's operating perimeter. We recommend placing the walker in a location so the ends of the arms have at least a 10 to 12 foot clearance from any obstruction. Once you've decided on a location, you can start to prepare the ground. The dimensions for the concrete pad will need to be a minimum of 60 inches by 60 inches square and 12 inches thick. When digging out the footing and building the concrete forms, be sure to check for square and level. Before pouring the concrete pad, you will need to run outdoor conduit for electricity. From a specified location of your choosing, dig a small trench to the center of where the concrete slab will be placed. Refer to the concrete pad preparation figure, front view, in the assembly instructions for correct placement of conduit. The conduit will need to extend approximately two to six inches above the finished concrete. You will need to consult your electrician and have them follow the electrical installation instructions provided by Prefort in the assembly instruction booklet. Once the conduit is in place, center up the structural anchor bolt jig, which Prefort pre-assembles from rebar. The jig measures 18 inches by 22 inches and has four 3 quarter inch industrial grade anchor bolts welded together. Refer to concrete pad preparation figure top view for correct placement. Now you can pour the concrete. 2x6 wooden trowel, not included. Once the concrete is dried, you're ready to anchor down the base assembly. Attach a chain or strap to the lifting eyes on each side at the top of the base. Using a forklift or front end loader, raise the base above the pad and lower it slowly as another person guides the unit onto the anchor bolts. Note, the base weighs approximately 1,200 pounds, so be sure the equipment used for lifting the box is able to handle this much working weight. Check the base to make sure it's level, and then tighten down the nuts on the anchor bolts. Very important! Inside the base assembly, you will find a plug located on the top level towards the right side. You will need to replace the plug with the breather before power is turned on. The breather is located in the control panel with the remote and antenna. No need to add oil. Prefort pre-fills the gearbox with a synthetic bearing and gear oil. Now you can attach the tree. Before attaching the tree, you will want to hand tighten all support straps, bolts, nuts, and lock washers to the tree. Turn support straps up against the tree. You will return later to securely tighten all the bolts. Use a chain or strap to lift the tree from the lifting eye located on the top of the tree. Lift the tree above the base and slide the tree over the main shaft. When the tree is all the way down, turn the tree to make sure it slides down and locks into place on the main shaft. To install the arms of the walker, attach the inner arms to the tree with the supplied bolts. Raise the inner arm and bolt to the support strap. Repeat until all arms are attached. Note, do not place the nuts on the bolts until all arms and bolts have been installed. This will allow enough clearance to install the next bolt as you attach each additional arm. Once all arms have been installed, then tighten all nuts. Now you're ready to attach the outer arms. Slide the end of the outer arm over the inner arm until the two pieces meet, being sure that the cable guide is in the vertical position. Repeat until all arms are attached. It's now time to attach the top cables. Attach the 241 and a half inch by half inch diameter top cables to the outer arm and attach the turnbuckle to the top of the tree. 
To do this, attach the half inch shackle to the cable eye and the top loop at the end of the outer arm. Then, bolt one end of the turnbuckle to the other end of the cable. Bolt the other end of the turnbuckle to the loop at the top of the tree. This will require a lifting device to raise the outer end of the arm, which allows enough slack to bolt the turnbuckle to the tree. The turnbuckles need to be unscrewed all of the way out until the treads are flush with the nut. Continue to attach top cables until all six arms are complete. Tighten all of the top cables until there's a slight upward bow in the arm. You can now move to attaching the inner cables. Attach the 111 and 3 quarter inch cables to the loops at the center of the arm by using the 3 8 inch quick links provided. Then attach the 84 and a quarter inch cable by connecting one end with the quick link and the other with the turnbuckle. Note, attaching some of the cables might require using a tie down strap or something similar to pull the arms close enough together to allow the cable to be connected. The last sets of cables to be attached are the outer cables. Attach the 270 inch outer cables in the same array as the inner cables at the ends of the arms by using the quick links to attach the cable ends to the loops on the side of the arm. Attach the 241 and a half inch cable at one end with the quick link and at the other end with a turnbuckle. Tighten the turnbuckles progressively until all the slack is out of the cables, taking up slack uniformly. This will prevent uneven arm alignment. After all of the cables are in place, the top turnbuckles may need to be tightened again. Now it's time for the hanging panel assembly. Bolt the panel mounting bracket and arm straps to the horse walker. Please note that the long arm strap features a warning label and attaches to the outer ear of the horse walker arm with the label facing out. The short arm strap attaches to the inner ear. Note, do not over tighten. It's important to allow pivoting from bracket and to ensure your panels are hanging level. Both the short and long arm straps are designed with multiple holes to allow you to adjust the height of the panel to fit your horse's needs. Note, consider the size and breed of your horse when determining the height for your hanging panels. You're now ready to install the round pin assembly. You will want to install the inner ring first using post connectors to connect each panel. Locate your desired position for the five foot bow gate. Attach the bow gate to the post connector using the connector pins on the post connector and the clips extruding from the bow gate. Be sure the holes on the anchoring flange face inward and toward the center of the ring. Take an inner ring panel and slide onto the corresponding panel connector clips. Attach another panel connector on the other end of the panel. Continue around inner ring to meet the first panel connector on your bow gate. As you're installing the panels, manually turn the hanging panel that is attached to the arm, rotating around to each panel to make sure you have the proper clearance. After clearance is achieved, drive an anchor rod through the hole on the post connector halfway into the ground as you work your way around. Continue to move the round pin panels around until there's approximately three inches of clearance between the hanging panel and the post connector on the inner ring. Repeat as you work your way around with curve panels and panel connectors until you work all the way around to the last post connector. Following the procedure used for the inner ring, locate the bow gate for the outer ring. Place it directly across from the inner bow gate. Connect an outer panel and attach the panel as before. Place another panel and continue around the outer ring. Be sure the holes on the anchoring flange face outward, away from the center of the ring. Remember to adjust the panels so there is approximately six inches of clearance between the hanging panels and the outer ring. Repeat as you work your way around with curve panels and panel connectors until you work all the way around to the last post connector. Once clearance has been achieved and you're satisfied with the placement of the panels, make sure to go back and drive all of the stakes the rest of the way into the ground. You can now run the panel charger wire along the arm, securing it to the arm with the tie straps provided. The wire should be connected to the nylatron ring located on the bottom side of the horse walker tree by using the quarter inch by half inch bolt. Be sure to keep the wire snug against the arm to help it avoid being caught on any obstruction during the walker's operation. Now, attach the electric wire to the panel by placing the quarter inch by three quarter inch bolts and nuts provided through the drilled hole on the inner drop-down arm strap. Be sure to leave enough slack for panel movement at the end. Continue running each wire to each panel until all panels are complete. 
connecting the ground rod. Drive the ground rod beside the walker base and attach the ground wire to the rod and to the charger. When attaching the wire to the charger, be sure to make a small loop at the end of the wire using a pair of pliers and attach it to the ground connector on the charger. Now run the wire to the ground rod, being sure to neatly position the wire flush with the concrete pad. Using your pliers, curve the wire upward at the point where the wire reaches the ground rod. Cut off any excess wire past this curve, leaving approximately one to two inches of wire pointing up. Using the wire connector, attach the wire to the ground rod. Once connected, drive the rod and wire into the ground using a sledgehammer. To complete the installation, plug the charger into the electrical plug located in the base of the walker. A certified electrician must install the rest of the wiring and wire motor control. They will need to consult the horse walker electrical instructions provided by Preferred in the assembly instruction booklet. Once power is applied to the walker, it's time to test it out. Your remote will arrive pre-programmed, but take a look at the horse walker operation instructions for further details on the normal operation of your walker. If you have any questions or need to contact us for any reason, please give us a call at 1-800-572-8616 or visit us online at prefert.com. Prefert, built by ranchers for ranchers.